Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here, listening to this presentation. My name is Ines. I work for the European Space Agency, the Earth Observation Center that is in Rome. And I'm part of the team that is implementing what is, is a component of the of Destiny Initiative. So since I don't know how much you know about this initiative, I'm going to do a brief overview of the whole initiative, how we are going to implement the system, then specifically go to ESA role in Destiny, and then I'm going to to say why people, external entities and external users should join the platform that we are developing. So if I say destiny, it's the same as destination earth. Is I, if I say desp, desp means the destiny service platform that is its development. But started from the beginning, an overview of destination earth initiative. So destination earth is a flagship initiative of the European Commission. So it's funded by European Commission and is implemented by three different entities, ESA, ECMWF, and UMEDSAT. So the objective of Destiny or Destination Earth is to develop a highly accurate digital model of the Earth. So we are going to generate high resol resolution data uh, simulating the Earth to monitor, simulate, and predict the interaction between natural phenomena and human activities. On top of this data, we will develop a platform that will support the development of services to assist users in designing accurate and actionable adaptation strategies and mitigation measures. So Destiny is an initiative of the European Commission that contributes to two of their main objectives, which are the New Green Deal and the digital strategy. So I think these slides will be shared with you. So I'm adding some links here in the description, the main link that I'm going to uh, mention in other slides too is the first one, which is, which is destination-earth.eu, which is the joint website that we have to, with the other entities, where we describe uh, the initiative, we update the timeline, we update all the events and activities that are around the, around the program. So, uh, as I mentioned, so uh, the objective of Destination Earth is shaping Europe's green and digital future by uh, evidence-based policy development, actionable predictions, and application developments. The objective of Destiny is also to contribute to the needs of many different uh, types of user communities. So it's a very ambitious uh, project. Here I'm listing how the initiative could contribute to three different types of user communities, for example, to policymakers by monitoring and simulating the Earth system and the impact of human intervention, anticipating environmental disaster, or enable the evaluation of different scenarios with the objective of a sustainable development. In terms of how it can contribute to researchers and scientists, we will provide access to a wide set of intersectoral data. So the main data from Destiny are these high resolution data generated by the digital twins, but we will combine those data with Earth observation data and other types of data. And we will also create a science development ecosystem with up to date tools and software, especially focusing on machine learning for developing and optimizing Earth related models. And finally, we also aim to address the needs of the general public. So we will, we want to have a very inclusive and easy access to the tools and to the information that is shared through Destiny so that uh, we can raise awareness and involve the global population in these in this subjects, in the subjects of environmental sustainability, climate change, etc. Here you have what is current timeline of the initiative. So it's a long-term initiative that is planned for at least about 10 years. Right now we are in phase one. We kicked off the initiative in 2022. So last year, we are a little bit more than a year ahead from the kickoff. So phase one is ending in June, 2024, when we plan to have a first start of operations of the system, but then we have phase two and phase three up to 2030 that are still to be defined exactly how long they are going to how they are going to be organized so again to be updated about destiny initiative activities and timeline you have the the web page there 
where you can join Destiny community and you can receive regular updates on how things are going. Moving to the second section of my talk, which is Destiny system implementation. So I described the objectives of the initiative. Now I'm going to describe how we plan to reach those objectives and what is the type of system that we are developing and implementing. As I mentioned, this is an initiative that is implemented by three different entities, ESA, ECMWF, and UMEDSAT. So we have three different contribution agreements with the commission, but we have a single technical annex. So there is a single system that is to be developed by the three different entities. Here you can see what are the three main components of the system. Each component is developed by one entity. You have uh, top left digital tune engine developed by ECMWF, which they are developing what are the digital twins, so are the, they are generating the high resolution data that will be of interest of Destiny user community. Then we have the data lake that is developed by UMEDSAT, that is basically uh, storage capabilities and also data management capabilities. They, are, they will have the direct link to the digital twin engine to retrieve the data. And finally, we have the core service platform, or I'm going to call it DESP from now, which is the single access for users to Destiny system. And this platform is developed by us, by ESA. Uh, here is a little bit a high level overview of the interaction between the different components. It's mainly like data interfaces, but between the digital twin engine and the data lake, there will be data retrieval for production and data retrieval for storage. Between the data lake and the platform, we will the platform will retrieve data from the data lake, but the platform will also share user-generated data in the data lake in case they are of uh, of interest of the to the whole community. And between the platform and the digital twin engine, this is more a long-term commitment, but we will have uh, capabilities for users to uh, configure the simulations of the digital twins or maybe to have on-demand request of the digital twin if for some specific event or for some local actions. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper on what is ESA role in Destiny, which is the development of Destiny service platform or DESP. So this is the single access point for users to Destiny system. This represents an, represents an operational ecosystem of services, providing an environment for development of tools, supporting evidence-based policy and decision-making, and is designed to be functional for a wide variety of user profiles. Here, I'm listing the main objectives of the platform. So the platform represents a comprehensive framework for analysis of Earth system processes. It enables the development and exploitation of applications and services on top of the destiny data that will be accessible through the platform. We will also provide direct access to the capabilities and functionalities that are provided by ECMWF in the Digital Twin Engine and UMEDSAT in the Data Lake. It's also designed to be an open digital platform, easily accessible by many type of users, including generic users, but also service provider, external entities that have services that are contributing to the same objectives of the European Commission that will want to plug their services in the platform to benefit of the, of the capabilities that we are providing. And finally, this, the platform is procured by ESA, but is fully implemented and operated by the industry. Here you have an overview of um, the ecosystem. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if it's big enough, but this is how we imagine the ecosystem to be. We have uh, links to different feder federated systems, such as the D Digital Twin Engine, the Data Lake, and other data sources. The ecosystem is made of many different types of services. We have what we call basic services or core services like the service desk, data access, dashboards, etc. Basic services so that the platform works. And then on top of the services, we have what we call advanced services. There are all the services that benefit of the core services and provide advanced capabilities with the same objectives. 
the procurement of this platform is organized the following way. So we have two main activities to procure this platform. The first one is called Desk Framework Core Services, and it was kicked off in May 2023. And it's going to procure all the basic services of the platform that you can see here. And they are supposed to be uh, supported long-term in the platform. So they are going to be there basically forever so that the platform works. Then we have a second activity that is called Desk Advanced Services that is going to procure, implement uh, all the advanced services on top of the core services. It's planned to be kicked off by December, so it hasn't started yet. But the idea is these advanced services are going to be flexible and adapted to the user community. So there will be continuous open calls to have new services and to understand what are the needs of the, of the users. Uh, going a little bit deeper on the activity one that is already started. Uh, the activity one is implemented by CERCO. Uh, CERCO as the, prime con as the prime contractor and in a consortium with the companies that you can see that on the top left. And on the bottom, you can see a little bit the timeline of the activity. We started in June. By October, we should have some uh, um, initial services, not operational yet, but initial implementation of services. And we are going to start the ramp up of operations until June 24, 24 which is the end of phase one, and when we plan the start of operations. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about how we are going to start the operations. There is a lot of information that I don't know yet because we are uh, in ongoing discussions with the Commission on how to define the governance of the, of the initiative. So I don't know how we are going to ramp up the operations, what type of users are going to have access during the ramp up and during the, the operational phase. But as soon as we have this information, we will share it through the, through the joint website. So we want to be very transparent, but I, I have to admit that this is still in discussion with the Commission. The plan is to have an open and free platform to all, many different type of users, but still uh, to be confirmed. And here you have what is the architecture that is proposed by, by CERCO. So they are implementing the core services, which is the left part uh, here. And they divided the, them in two different types of services, platform management, which is all basic platform management services, such as service desk, IM and accounting, service registry, dashboard, et cetera. And then all data management services. So also this information, you can find it in the joint website because there was a webinar in July where this information was presented. So you have here the link to the PDF. Um, okay, and I'm moving on to the last part of the presentation, which is why external users and external entities should join Destiny Core Service Platform. So first, we are developing what we call an operational platform. And for this, uh, the services that are going to be integrated in the platform and registered there will need to comply to some requires, requirements to make the platform operational. For example, we need services that are easily adapted to different types of user scenarios, because right now we don't know what is the user community for Destiny. We can predict it a little bit based on the people that are uh, accessing the information that we have, but we need services that are able to address the needs of 10 users, but that also can provide scalability options if, if instead of 10 users, they have a thousand users. Desk services should serve the objectives of Destination Earth initiative, therefore contributing to the European digital development and to the Green New Deal. And finally, desk services shall provide an open and inclusive access to desk users. So normally the services should be open to the whole community and provide an open access. So at least there will be there has to be some functionalities that are free for all desk users. And the services should shall commit to standards of quality and performance for operations. Second reason why someone sh should join DESP is because we are fostering collaboration. So we want users to communicate between them, to communicate to the, with the service providers, and also to communicate with the, with the entities that are in charge of developing the platform. So the platform is planned for a large user community and designed to be inclusive, collaborative, and flexible. 
provides free services to the users and scalability options. Uh, the platform is also going to provide a free onboarding support service. So if uh, external services want to integrate in the platform, there will be a free support to help that happen and to make sure that the maximum amount of external services can benefit of the of destiny system. The, the platform will gradually allow users to, to uh, customize it by integrating their own data, integrating their own models, and also helping users to make models and applications operational. And this design evolution is above all defined by Destiny user community through co-design established process. The next point why you should join DESP is because we are focusing a lot on user engagement. We want the users to feel that they are participating in the project. And for now, since there is no operational phase yet, we are basically organizing regular events like workshops and webinars, and you can be updated about the, the, the events there. But I want to highlight these two up upcoming events that are coming. The first one, well, the first one is on the right, which is the BITS Big Data from Space Conference in Vienna, where we organize the DESP Innovation Prize. And on the left, you have the second destination Earth User Exchange organized by ECMWF in Bonn in November. And finally, to finish my presentation, uh, I wanted to add these slides uh, of the contribution opportunities that are existing now and will exist in the future. Unfortunately, since this is funded by the European Union, for now, all these activities are only open to European contributors, but I expect that when we start operations, we will open the platform to uh, non-European contributors, but for now, uh, you can see here some activities that we have open. So we have this activity that is called ESA use cases. So that is looking for pre-operational applications and they will have a best practice open, open call next year, the second one, because we already had one. We have uh, ESA advanced services, which is this activity looking for actual operational services, advanced operational services that are going to be on top of the core services and there will be a continuous open call for that, that will be open, I think, around early next year. We have two open tenders right now, one focused on destiny impact assessment and the other focused on AI and ML in the, in the platform. So those two are open now and they will close around end of October. And then we have, apart from Destination Earth, we have this program that is only ESA, not from the European Commission, that is called Digital Twin Earth, that is focusing on Earth observation data and Earth observation uh, components, the Digital Twin components uh, using Earth observation data. So this program will also have open call for looking for these components, so open soon. I don't know yet when, but soon, this year probably. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening and happy to answer any question. You have my email there. So if you want to contact me, feel free. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ines, for sharing with us the opportunities and how we can engage with them. Do we have any questions? Anyone has a question? Do you want to know more about the opportunities present? Anybody? Questions? Ines, uh, maybe if you could mention what are the, the biggest data sets that you will sh share? Um, so the data portfolio, I think it will be public quite soon, but for now we are planning to share all the data that are generated by the digital twins, which I think is the biggest data set because we have, as already mentioned, so for now the digital twin engine developed by ECNWF is developing two different digital twins, one on weather hazards and the other one on climate adaptation. So I think those are the biggest volume uh, data sets that we are going to have. We are going to have direct access to the Copernicus data access, that for sure. And then we are also planning to have, uh, for example, we have an activity now that is open to have access to Earth Explorers data. 
We are also planning to have access to statistical data from Eurostat. So still to be defined, but at least uh, those data sets are included. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Peter? Well, if there is no other question, I think it uh, may be the obvious question. We have this ecosystem and we have the CDSE ecosystem. How do you two, uh, and both are open and want, it, want to federate. So when will these two federate so that we essentially can speak about one ecosystem? So yeah, both ecosystem are existing and we are working together. So we are both at ISA collaborating. It's like we are almost the same team so there's not going to be a competition between them. We are going to work together. The Federation, I guess, for, for the start of operations in June 2024, you can expect this Federation between the two ecosystems. We are currently discussing on how to do it. So by the end of phase one, probably it will be ready. Okay, and just the last question. Uh, if somebody, you probably have some workshops, right? You organize some workshops. Yes. And so if somebody wants to come to some workshop. Yes, there is. So there is this workshop in Bonn in November, which is called Second Destination Earth User Exchange Workshop. It, the registration is it's open now, so feel free to register and to join. Okay, great. So end of end of November? some uh, Mid-November, 13 mid, and 14. Mid-November, if you're interested, you can come to Bonn and you can... Uh, get your hands on the system and talk really with the core team. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.